Our next guest, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz, will lead that congressional tour with a Republican colleague. He's a graduate of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. He was a state representative for Parkland at the time of the tragedy, which spurred him to help push for anti-gun violence legislation. Congressman, I appreciate your time. I want to start with, um, you've been, I believe, inside the school. You're one of the few people that's actually been in. What should people expect uh, when they walk in today? What are they going to see? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Thanks for, for, for talking about this, you know, five years after uh, the Marjorie Stillman Douglas School shooting at the building right behind me where I went to high school. I mean, listen, what they're going to see is, uh, you know, a unique experience, a horrific experience. The building behind us is a time capsule. Uh, it, other than the victims obviously no longer being there, the building is exactly as it was on February 15th, the day after the shooting. And so we're going to be walking through that building, a bipartisan delegation uh, with law enforcement, uh, with folks from the state attorney's office, folks from the school board, and with family members, uh, family members, some of them going into the building for the first time. And so uh, this is important. It's important for folks uh, in Congress, my colleagues, to see what happens when a school shooting comes to your neighborhood, how it affects families. And so, uh, but it's going to be a very emotional day. Uh, you invited every member of Congress to, to join you, Democrats and Republicans. There are, uh, this is a bipartisan delegation that will be with you today. You've done this before as well. The last time you did this, uh, in the months after, the most significant gun safety legislation in decades uh, was enacted, was signed into law by President Biden. What do you hope uh, this leads to? Well, look, today is about again just the visuals and and walking with the parents and supporting them and supporting the community uh, and the emotional experience you know I'm not naive I'm not expecting we're gonna walk out of the building and start working on legislation but the idea is to continue to have the conversation I mean there's a lot we can do when it comes to school safety gun violence prevention there's not one thing that we have to do and we have to find where we have common ground uh, that bill we passed, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School Safety Act, uh, after three weeks after the shooting in the Florida legislature, was a bipartisan piece of legislation. It did school safety, it did mental health, it did SROs, it raised the age to 21 to buy a gun in Florida, red flag laws, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for school safety around the state. And so it was a comprehensive piece of legislation. I don't know that D.C. Can, is going to do that. But is, if we can continue to work on mitigation, one thing... Uh, after an X, we can save a lot of lives. You know, the, there will be uh, family members uh, of victims and survivors that will be touring or walking through uh, the school today. I, I know you represent represent the district in the state house. You uh, represent the district and Congress. I assume you're in regular contact with many of these individuals. What do you hope uh, they get from this experience? Closure, clarity, uh, something for this, the civil case. Oh, look, there's no closure. There's never closure, right? We don't move on. We move forward. Um, you know, these families visit their kids at a cemetery, you know, empty rooms in their house. They didn't get a high school graduation. They get a college graduation. There's no weddings. There's no grandkids. There's no future. Uh, this is part of the experience. They relive this every day. Uh, they relive this every time there's a mass shooting in this country. They relive this every time. Uh, there is a, a, a fake call into a school somewhere and a school gets evacuated. Uh, but the parents and the students that were in this building that day, uh, that made it out, I mean, they have dedicated their lives, the parents have dedicated their lives, they've crisscrossed the country, trying to make sure other families don't involuntarily become members of an exclusive club that no one wants to belong to. And that's sending your kid to school and them not coming home. For those families, though, who have been doing that work, I think so far this year the U.S. has suffered more than 400 mass shootings. I think there were more school shootings last year, 46, than any year since 1999. Do they feel like they're making a difference, or does this just feel like a Sisyphean task for them? No, look, we're making progress. Uh, there's progress all the time. There's different laws being passed. There's more allies coming to the table. You see it as a rising issue in, in, in polling. Uh, but listen, we're not going to solve this overnight. Uh, they recognize that. Uh, but they're going to continue. This is their cause. This is, they do this in the memory uh, of, of their kids. Uh, and they don't want other parents to have to go through 
what they have gone through. They don't want other parents that they don't even know to have to experience this. And so, look, we're making progress. We need to make more progress. We need to figure out where there's common ground, where we can work together uh, so that we can save whether it, your kid's at a grocery store, at a school, at a movie theater, at a mall, or just regular gun violence that happens every single solitary day in some neighborhoods. Too many kids are dying from this. And we got to figure out how we can come together. Congressman, I do want to ask before I let you go, uh, on a different topic, you, you mentioned your bipartisan work both back in the state and here er, and in Washington. Uh, that work included working with Governor Ron DeSantis uh, at various points. What's your perspective of his presidential campaign and how he's done up to this point? Well, look, if you look at that race for all the candidates, right, I mean, it, it, it's, it's Donald Trump. It's only Donald Trump. It's super clear that that's, that's the case and that's what at least primary voters want according to the polling. And so I don't, whether you're Tim Scott or Ron DeSantis, you know, right now, I don't know that there's much that they can do. I mean, R Donald Trump has indictment momentum. Every time he gets indicted, his poll numbers go up. He raises another four or five, six million dollars. And so right now, I think that that, that race is frozen. Uh, and so, you know, that's my assessment of where things are at. Uh, you know, there's a debate coming up in August that would have given the candidates a chance to contrast themselves with Donald Trump, but Trump's not even coming. He's not even, you know, the, the idea that he's not going to be on stage for the first debate as the leading candidate is something I don't think we've, we've seen before. So everything that's happening right now uh, across the aisle in the primaries is really a case of first impression. Donald Trump with a triple crown indictment is the leading candidate on the Republican side for president. Waiting to see about the uh, uh, the debate stage with Trump. Uh, I appreciate your time, sir. I know this is a very powerful and poignant day uh, for you and the families. Congressman Jer Jared Moskowitz, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, quite a day for them. Yeah. That's for sure.